Hello, welcome to DIY Tech Guy. Today I'm going to show you how you use a light sensor to measure the amount of ambient light in a room. This is different from our previous Arduino projects, where we use digital sensors that provide information in high or low voltages. The light sensor is an analog sensor and is capable of reading a range of values. We'll use the return values to illuminate a set of five LEDs to indicate the level of light, with more LEDs being illuminated when more light is detected. We're going to need the following parts to complete this project. First, we'll need a light sensor, also called a photoresistor. We'll need a 1K ohm resistor for hooking up the light sensor. Five LEDs to show the output of the results from the light sensor. We'll need five 330 ohm resistors to bring the voltage down, uh, providing power to those LEDs so we don't burn them out. We'll need some jumper wires, an Arduino Uno, and finally a breadboard. Let's begin the assembly of the hardware. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is connect the power from the Arduino to the power rails of our breadboard. We want to connect the 5 volt power supply coming from the Arduino to our 5 volt rail on our breadboard, like so. We'll connect the ground from our Arduino to the negative side of our breadboard rail. We're using a larger breadboard for this project, so we're going to have to connect the two sets of rails here because uh, they're not connected all the way through. They break at the middle, so we're going to have to jump those to make sure that we get our neutral from that left side to the right side. We don't need the five volts uh, since the right side will be used mainly for just illuminating the LEDs and they'll be powered from the other side of the board uh, directly from our Arduino pins. So with this little jumper in place we've essentially just made the entire negative rail on the bottom side of this board uh, connected to ground. We'll now attach our light sensor to the breadboard. The, the light sensor is not polarized, so it doesn't matter which way we go with this one. We just want to make sure that each pin of the photoresistor is in two separate columns on the breadboard. On the pin to the right on the light sensor, we're going to connect a 1K resistor and bring that to ground on the bottom ground rail. We're also going to connect that same pin to our analog zero pin on our Arduino. And this is the pin that we'll read the voltage from the photoresistor from. We'll supply power to the photoresistor using a jumper wire from the five volt rail to the left pin on the photoresistor. We now have everything in place that we need to measure the amount of ambient light in the room. The only part left is to provide a way to output the results of those readings. We are going to use a series of five LEDs to illuminate based on the amount of light detected in the room. If no light is detected, none of the LEDs will illuminate. If it is very bright in the room, all five LEDs will illuminate. I'm installing the five LEDs two rows apart from one another to allow enough space between the LEDs. I'm positioning the positive leg of the LED towards the rear of the breadboard and the negative LED towards the front. This will allow me to easily ground the LEDs through 330 ohm resistors. The positive legs of the LEDs will be attached to digital pins 2 through 6, which will allow us to control their illumination in our code based on the amount of light that is read from analog pin 0. At this point, all five LEDs have been installed. It's now time to install the 330 ohm resistors on each of the LEDs. We're going to connect one end of it to ground and the other end to the negative pin of the LED. This will prevent the LEDs from burning out from too much voltage.
The only thing left to do now is to connect each of these LEDs to a digital pin on the Arduino. We're using pins two through six to represent the LEDs one through five in our sketch. You may ask, why aren't we using pin one and just go through pin five? That sounds a lot simpler, doesn't it? Well, the reason we don't use pin one or pin zero is they're used by the serial communications on the Uno. And if you connect pins to there, you won't be able to send any kind of information to the serial monitor and it could mess up your code. So you wanna leave them unused if you plan on using the serial monitor. And in a case like this, where we're testing voltages and we're, we wanna use different ranges of voltages to determine how these lights light up, we don't really know those breakpoints yet. So we're gonna use that serial monitor to see exactly at what level we want each individual LED to light. Okay, let's put together a code that's gonna be required to operate this light sensor and to light our LEDs based on the amount of light. Um, first thing we're going to need is to define our, our LED pins. And we'll do that up here above the void section. So this will allow us to uh, refer to these pins as LED 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 rather than their actual pin numbers. And we're also going to need another variable for the light. And this is the light value coming back from that sensor. And we'll initialize this at a zero for now. Um, another thing we're going to want to put in here that we haven't used in previous lessons is during the setup, we want to add this line of code, the serial begin 9600. This initializes the serial communication port so that we can do some debug statements and write some things out to the screen. This isn't something that we would use in a final product because we wouldn't be connected to a screen, uh, but it is helpful for debugging, especially in, in programs like this where you have um, a voltage that you're reading and you, and you need to know where those breakpoints are for that the, the amount of light that you would want to light those bulbs with. Next piece we want to add in here is set up all, all of our, our output pins. And these are for all our LEDs to make sure that they're set in output mode. And now we come down to our main code. First thing we're going to want to do is um, read that, that analog pin, that analog pin zero. Um, and what that'll do, that'll return the, um, the value of the light. And based on that value is what we're gonna work with. And just to help us out a little bit here, we're going to add another line. And this is why we added that serial print line or that serial um, begin. And what this will do, this will print out the, the light value to our serial monitor. And so, and we're, this is going to uh, require a bunch of things being repeated and so because of for each light bulb so what we're going to do what we're going to do is if the light is greater than 100 we're going to digital write led one to high so that will light that first bulb if it's if it's a greater than 100 or or anything above that so if it's lower than 100 that that first bulb won't light um, and that's why we either write it high or write it low, depending on whether it's greater than 100 or not. Now, the next few lines of code um, is really just a copy of that first one. Um, it's, we're going to be looking at the next set of lights. Let me paste this in here. I'll talk about this. Okay, so for the second one, we're going to say, okay, if the light is greater than 200, then turn it on. Otherwise, turn it off. If it's greater than 300, turn it on or turn it off greater than 400 and so on. And what we'll need to do, once we get our serial monitor open, we may need to change these value depending on the ambient light in the room. You know, we don't want to start off at, you know, four lights lit and only be able to go up to five. We want to kind of start off on our lowest value and go up to uh, closer to the highest value. And one other thing I'm going to add in here, um, and, you know, since we're not waiting on any direct input from a key or anything like that that can be pressed really quick. It's it's just, you know, reading that the light, um, it's just reading that light value. I like to add one more line of code just to keep, like I, I don't like the idea that the program is constantly spinning and racing through it. So I like to, after each, every time it reads, and updates those lights, it's gonna go back and it's gonna say, okay, let's wait a quarter of a second. That's 250 milliseconds. So that's one quarter of one second before it reads again. And as far as the naked eye goes, you're not gonna notice any difference as far as, um, you know, whether it's accurate, you know, 
to the millisecond or not, but um, it, it'll, it'll still be useful. Uh, now, you wouldn't want to do this if you were um, accepting input from a key or a button because the button press could be less than 250 milliseconds. Um, but in a situation like this, I do like to slow it down just a bit. And that's all there is to it. So let's see if we can co compile it. Okay, everything compiled successfully. So now all that's left is to transfer it onto the Arduino and test this out. Let's go ahead and compile our sketch. Let's plug our Arduino in first. Just like so. And let's see, it, it's compiling and it is done uploading. We can see those lights blinking, letting us know that it's transferred over successfully. Okay, everything seems to be working. Now I've been changing light in the room a little bit to see if I can get it to change and it seems to be working just fine. Or it's dropping down to one now and um, you know, I was going back up as I turn other lights on in the room. And even sometimes just the position of the uh, sensor will make a difference and you can shadow it with your hand there. No lights are going on. So it must be below 100 that we put in our code. Um, I'm gonna get out a flashlight here and see if I can get it to go up to all five. We had it down to one, we're up to three. And here's with a flashlight, we can get all five to light if we uh, shine the flashlight directly on the photo sensor. So this seems to be working as designed. I hope this uh, video was helpful and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching my video. Please consider subscribing or clicking the bell icon to be notified of future videos.